Welcome to Walking the Way. Today is the 2nd of November. My name is Ray, and I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have regular rhythms of worship together. If you're listening for the very first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. But let's not waste any more time. Let's start today's leg of Walking the Way. We begin with our opening prayer. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to Thee, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly Thine, utterly dedicated unto Thee. And then use us, we pray Thee, as Thou wilt, and also to Thy glory and welfare of Thy people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour, Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music for today, and after the music we'll get straight into our Bible readings. Let's ask God to speak to us as we open up his word today. Lord, as we open our ears, we also open our hearts that these words of truth may fall upon the very fabric of our lives. May these ancient scriptures come alive within us to inspire, to heal, to cleanse and to teach, to restore and to guide our hearts and minds. Lord, come weave your words of life in us. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the Message Translation. And we begin with Ezra 9. After all this was done, the leaders came to me and said, The people of Israel, priests and Levites included, have not kept themselves separate from the neighboring people around here with their vulgar obscenities. Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians and Amorites. They have given some of their daughters in marriage to them and have taken some of their daughters for marriage to their sons. The holy seed is now all mixed in with these other people and our leaders have led the way in this betrayal. 
when I heard this. I ripped my clothes and my cape. I pulled hair from my head and out of my beard. I slumped to the ground, appalled. Many were in fear and trembling because of what God was saying about the betrayal by the exiles. They gathered around me as I sat there in despair, waiting for their evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice I picked myself up from my utter devastation, and in my ripped clothes and cape fell to my knees, and stretched out my hands to God, my God, and I prayed. My dear God, I am so totally ashamed. I cannot bear to face you. Oh, my God, our iniquities are piled up so high that we can't see out. Our guilt touches the skies. We have been stuck in a muck of guilt since the time of our ancestors until right now. We and our kings and priests, because of our sins, have been turned over to foreign kings, to killing, to captivity, to looting and to public shame, just as you see us now. Now, for a brief time, God, our God, has allowed us this battered band to get a firm foothold in his holy place, so that our God may brighten our eyes and lighten our burdens as we serve out this hard sentence. We were slaves, yet even as slaves God didn't abandon us. He has put us in the good graces of the king of Persia, and given us the heart to build the temple of our God, restore its ruins, and construct a defensive wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, our God, after all this, what can we say for ourselves? For we have thrown your commands to the wind, the commands you gave us through your servants, the prophets. They told us. The land you're taking over is a polluted land, polluted with the obscene vulgarities of the people who live there. They filled it with their moral rot from one end to the other. Whatever you do, don't give your sons in marriage to their sons, nor marry your sons to their daughters. Don't cultivate their good opinion. Don't make over them and get them to like you so you can make a lot of money and build up a tidy estate to hand down to your children. And now this, on top of all we've already suffered because of our evil ways and accumulated guilt. Even through you, dear God. Even though you, dear God, punished us far less than we deserved and even went ahead and gave us this present escape. Yet here we are, at it again, breaking your commandments by intermarrying with the people who practice all these obscenities. Are you angry to the point of wiping us out completely, without even a few stragglers with no way out at all? You are the righteous God of Israel. We are, right now, a small band of escapees. Look at us, openly standing here guilty before you, no one can last like this. Revelation 17, 1-14 through 14. One of the seven angels who carried the seven bowls came and invited me. Come, I'll show you the judgment of the great hall who sits enthroned over many waters. The hall with whom the king of the earth has gone whoring. Show you the judgment on earth dwellers drunk with her whorish lust. In the spirit he carried me out in the desert. I saw a woman mounted on a scarlet beast. Stuffed with blasphemies, the beast had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, festooned with gold and gems and pearls. She held a gold chalice in her hand, brimming with defiling obscenities, her foul fornications. A riddle name was branded on her forehead. Great Babylon, mother of whores and abominations of the earth, I could see that the woman was drunk. Drunk on the blood of God's holy people. Drunk on the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Astonished, I rubbed my eyes. I shook my head in wonder. The angel said, Does this surprise you? Let me tell you the riddle of the woman and the beast she rides. The beast with seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw once was is no longer and is about to ascend from the abyss and head straight for hell. Earth dwellers, whose names aren't written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will be dazzled when they see the beast that once was, is no longer, and is to come. But don't drop your guard. Use your head. The seven heads are seven hills. They are where the woman sits. They are also seven kings, five dead 
one living and the other not yet here. And when he does come, his time will be brief. The beast that once was and is no longer is both an eighth and one of the seventh, and headed for hell. The ten horns you saw are ten kings, but they are not yet in power. They will come to power with the scarlet beast, but won't last long, a very brief reign. These kings will agree to turn over their power and authority to the beast. They will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them, proof that he is lord over all lords, king over all kings, and those with him will be the called, chosen, and faithful. Matthew fourteen twenty two through 36 As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the people dispersed, he climbed the mountain so that he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone, late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea when the wind came up against them, and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. A ghost, they cried, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter suddenly bold said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. He said, Come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me! Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, Faint heart, what's gotten into you? The two of them climbed into the boat, and the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshipped Jesus, saying, This is it. You are God's son for sure. On return they beached the boat at Gennesaret. When the people got wind that he was back, they sent out word through the neighbourhood, and rounded up all the sick who had asked for permission to touch the edge of his coat, and whoever touched him was healed. We're going to have our second piece of music to give us some time to think about the bits of scriptures that have caught our attention. And after the music, we'll get into our prayers for the day and the time of the year. Let's pray, shall we? As we make our way often wearily to work, or hop into the car and do the weekly shop, Lord, we think of those who through the night while we were asleep have stacked the shelves, made safe the roads, transported goods, kept factories running, cared for the sick and dying. Bless them with the rest that they deserve and need, and may we be thankful for the work they do, 
that makes our lives each day a little easier. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. Our God, we pray for empathy, seeking to understand ideas, people, situations, ourselves, our faith, our hopes. Seeking, exploring the why of life, the why of who we are. Seeking, because we know that only by seeking do we go beyond ourselves, to where answers reside, answers that we had never considered. And we are enriched by becoming more whole. We pray that we would be vulnerable, open to being influenced to new ideas, new possibilities. Lives enriched with new experiences, horizons, things we thought not possible. Surprise us, our God. We know change causes us to be vulnerable. As we become less capable of adapting, changes seem greater. As our limits become more apparent, our abilities seem in decline. Simple things. Small changes take on greater magnitude. Keep ideas, possibilities, dreams, hopes, growing in and around us, so that change is not an inhibitor, but stimulation into new life. Cause our attitude to change to be invitational, not to create whirlwind our lives, but measured growth. Keep us curious about life, exploring and discovering, growing into understanding, more of the mystery of life as we walk with you, author of life and our guide. As we seek these things for ourselves, we pray that they become realities for those around us. As we seek these things for ourselves, we pray that they become realities for those around us. Use us as channels of your understanding, influence, curiosity, to help others grow. We take our part in your creation more fully when we offer ourselves to others and to you. Use us, we pray. Place people in our paths that will cause us to grow and whom we can help grow. These things we desire. We pray for those whom we find difficult to love as well as those close to us. Lord, lead us into wholeness, whatever that may be. In Jesus' name. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.